Did um, did you know that you can create really nice looking light rays in post without using a fog machine? Well, let me tell you. Well, you can, and it's pretty easy. So let's talk about it, shall we? Yes. Yes, we shall. Yes. All right. Well, all right, it's good to be back. Let's talk about light rays. I think it's something we all get pretty excited about filming. Love when it happens naturally on a really misty day. Great when you have the time and budget to use a fog machine or a hazer. But let's face it, that is not always the case. Especially if you're off in a one-man band like myself, it is hard to keep track of the filming, the directing, the lighting, and running around with a fog machine as well. <laughs> and even if you get up really early to catch that morning fog, there is no guarantee that there'll be any. So that's why I'm really happy that there are really easy ways to do this in post-production when we need to. I'll be talking about how to do it in uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, specifically, since that is what I'm using to edit my videos these days. So let me move you a little bit closer to the monitor so I can show you uh, where to find this effect and how to use it properly. Shall we? All right. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just cut this, cut this out. Sorry. All right, here we are. Closer. All right, just a little side note. I am pushing this effect pretty hard in these examples just so you can see what is happening when we apply the effect. Don't, don't do that. It's, this is probably too much. Uh, try to be subtle. I would recommend creating the effect, then walking away from the computer for a couple of hours, then coming back to see uh, what it is that you've done with a fresh mindset just to make sure you've not created some sort of monstrosity because it's really easy to get lost uh, in your color grading and not realize that you've totally destroyed your own footage. But with that said, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and just destroy this footage. Uh, Alright, so I am in the uh, color page in DaVinci Resolve 19 beta. I forget which. which. I forget which version of the beta, maybe six, but it's DaVinci Resolve 19 beta, just so you know. The studio version. Uh, I've got my um, semi-messy node tree right here, the uh, light rays over here, and over here, I've also added a little bit of fake fog, because I think that really complements the light rays. I mean, what is light rays? It's light going through tiny particles in the air, right? So we usually get light rays when there is fog. So a good way to complement the footage and make the light rays look more believable is to actually add fog as well. So I'll show you a little bit how to do that too. I'm just gonna show you how this clip looks without everything. So I'm just going to turn off the LUT. I'm gonna turn uh, these off. I'm gonna turn the vignette off. I'm going to turn off the fog and these color adjustments and this is the uh, raw clip uh, as it looked in camera. It's a little bit faded, as you can see. I was using the uh, Helios 44-2 uh, with a very narrow uh, focus. So, and I didn't have a lens hood on. So uh, there is actually a bit of light bleeding into the frame. That's why it already looks kind of faded. Another example, is the uh, clip I have right here. This is shot with a different lens. Uh, it has a little bit more uh, contrast in it. Um, but it, as you can see, it's the same type of node tree going on in this uh, clip as well. With all these things turned off, the raw footage looks a little bit something like this. So. As you can see, there's a little bit more contrast in that video clip. 
Anyway, let's, uh, let's focus on the light rays first, shall we? So maybe in this clip I'm going to turn on all the things. So this is the clip without the fog and without the light rays. Playing at a really low resolution, apparently. I'm just going to bump this up a little bit. I think it was a bit uh, slow when I had the light ray and the fog going. So, on this node, the light ray node, if we turn this back on again, if we open the effects window, you can see the settings for this effect. To add the light rays effect, all you have to do is create a new node. Um, With this node selected, jump into the effects window, uh, search for light rays, and just drag and drop that onto your uh, footage. I'm just going to uh, delete this again because I want to use the node that I already created for this example. So if I turn my node back on again, jump into the effects window, you can see all the settings that I'm using right here. So what it does, it creates the light rays based on the bright parts of your image. Under position there is a drop down menu called Ray Directions. By default it will be set from a location, but I like to change this to at an angle instead. From a direction might be really useful if you're actually seeing the sun in your video clip because then obviously you want the rays to come from a specific point in your video clip. For me, however, the sun is out of frame and I want the rays to just follow one path, like one angle. So that is why I'm choosing at an angle. And with this slider right here, you can actually choose the angle that you want the sun to be at. As you can see in my clip, the sun is over on the right somewhere. You can see on the tree that the sun is hitting the tree some, somewhere over here, or there's sun on the grass. So I'm just trying to match the angle to the light in a realistic way. At the same time, maybe trying to uh, avoid our model getting too much of that light covering her face. You can play with the length of the light rays. Obviously I want them to end somewhere before it hits the ground, so maybe that is a pretty good spot. Uh, you can play around with the softness. If you pull that all the way to the left, you can see that the light gets pretty harsh. Like it's following all these edges of the trees and everything else in the frame. Uh, so I like to, since it's a pretty soft shot, I'd like to soften that up a little bit, but you know, keep it, keep it slightly. I like those, you know, differences small differences in the light rays. Uh, down here you have brightness. Uh, this is where you need to be really uh, careful with how much brightness you add. It's, re it'll really, it's really easy to go overboard. Uh, so, you know... Subtlety is key. Uh, I've also set mine uh, to screen. I think when you add it, uh, when you add the effect from the beginning, it will be set to add. Um, depending on the scene, I think it might just create too much brightness. Like in mine right here, it's, it's definitely overexposed. You can see my waveform down here going crazy. Uh, so I just like to change that to uh, screen instead. Uh, and I've also created another node uh, stacked on this one, where I've actually uh, lowered the highlights a little bit. So they're not, you know, too strong. Still pretty bright, as you can see in my waveform, but as I said before, I'm trying to go a little bit overboard here, just to, just to make the effect overall uh, clear and visible. Now, I'm just gonna lower the brightness a little bit, and let's see what happens when I turn the fog on. Can you see that? That there is a bit of softness going on behind our 
free and our model and it works really well together with the light rays. It just creates a softer look overall. Uh, so how I did this was I created a new node and in the effects tab I added the depth map. The depth map is extremely useful in so many ways. It probably needs its own video. But in short, as you can see, it calculates the depth in your video, which is absolutely insane. Uh, so what I've done here is I created a depth map. I inverted it. Uh, I inverted because I wanted to affect the background and not the foreground. And I created a mask with a pretty big feather uh, where I wanted the fog to be. You see that if I move this around, I sort of, the fog sort of moves with it as well. Let me just, I think I lowered the opacity on this one. So let me just pull this up to max. There we go. So this is with the fog effect uh, way too strong. And how I did this is I added the depth map, adjusted it to my liking, uh, then I just uh, went over to contrast, I pulled that way down. Uh, and I also pulled the details down a little bit to make the background less contrasty and less detailed, sort of as, you know, just to sort of cheat that feeling of looking through fog, I guess. I also pulled up the brightness a little bit on the um, uh, curves. Yeah, let's uh, bring the fog down a little bit again. Uh, maybe around there somewhere is good. Yeah, and I thought that looks uh, pretty nice. It's uh, very dreamy. Uh, again, everything's pretty strong right now, but still looks really nice. Uh, so again, if we jump back to this other scene, uh, turn on all of these. and the fog. See, in this scene, the fog really does a lot. And I did the same thing here. Uh, created a depth map, I inverted it. Uh, played around a little bit with uh, the limit, just to make sure that um, the fog is at a right distance, that it's behind the trees and not in front of the trees. Uh, created a mask for that again, and placed it where I wanted the fog to be most uh, prominent, lower the contrast, uh, lower the mids and details, up the, uh, uh, the exposure a little bit, just on the curves. Uh, light rays, same as before. This, uh, this shot is even softer than the first one, so it was shot with a really shallow depth of field and on that uh, Helios 44 too, so uh, I made sure that the light rays are really soft, because that suits the image better. I also created a couple of masks just to make sure that the light rays weren't everywhere. So wherever the masks are, the light rays will... Uh, oh, sorry. And the light rays will come through. So if I move this around... Making sure that there's a little bit darker right here across her face and across her body just so we can see her a little bit better and uh, making sure that the light is a little bit stronger here where it hits the tree because it makes more sense right uh, and this ray also makes a lot of sense i think because you can see that there's sun over here and it looks like this ray and this ray sort of creates this sunlight in the foreground and in this shot i'm actually using uh, add to composite this one instead of screen uh, just because i thought that it suited this uh, this shot better so you know um, yeah, so you just need to, you know, play around with this effect uh, on your own clips and see, see what works and what doesn't. Um, it doesn't look great every time. But when it works, I think it works really great. And it's just a really nice tool to have when you want to create a little bit more atmosphere that you might not have been able to get on location. Even though I think we all know that the real stuff in camera is, uh, is always nicer.
Um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess that was it. Not not much to it really. Um, I recommend you jump into uh, DaVinci and play around with these effects yourself and see if it's something that will suit your projects in the future. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.